Okay, uh, good afternoon class, right? Uh, so I hope all of you are okay, right? So let's uh, continue, okay, uh, to next uh, topic, okay, about the uh, type of wave, okay? Okay, so before we, uh, we learn about the type of wave, okay, so we see what does it mean by wave profile, okay. So wave profile is the shape of slinky spring as wave propagate through it, okay. So example like uh, later we will learn about the uh, transverse wave, right. So the transverse wave, uh, the slinky spring will move up and down, right. If for the longitudinal wave, okay, it will move from uh, left to right, all right, and then also they will produce the compression part and also the reflection part, okay. So that is the wave profile. So what you can see, okay, the shape of the sinky spring, okay, as wave propagate through it, okay. So there are two types of wave, okay, before we continue about the longitudinal and the uh, transverse wave. So the first one is a progressive wave. Okay, so the progressive wave is the wave profile propagates with time along the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay, so example like the water wave. Okay, so let's say we throw a stone, okay, into the water. So you can see the water wave, it moves outward, right, from the center of the circle. So you can see there is a movement, okay, of the, uh, of the wave, right, of the wave, okay, uh, along the, the, with the time, okay, with the time. Okay, but for the stationary wave, okay, the profile of the wave, right, does not propagate with time. So, they say if you play a guitar, right, so the wave will stay there, okay. Even if you vibrate, it will vibrate at the same place, right, and it will not move, okay, uh, throughout the time. Okay, it does not propagate with time, okay. But for the, uh, for the progressive wave, you can see the movement of the wave, right? So like I, st I told you just now, when you throw the stone in the water, so you can see the move movement of the wave, right? The movement of the wave, it move outward from the circle. But let's say if the guitar, okay, the, it will stay there, right? It just vibrate, okay, to produce a sound like that, okay? So that is the difference between the progressive wave and also the stationary wave, okay? So the next part is the mechanical wave and the electromagnetic wave. So what's the difference between the mechanical wave and also the electromagnetic wave? Okay, so for the mechanical wave, it requires a medium to transfer an energy. So example, like uh, I told you about the sound wave, right? So the sound wave, they need the air particle, okay? So the air particle can vibrate, Okay, and then it will send the energy to the next air particle. Okay, then it will be travel until uh, your eardrum. Okay, so mean it need the air particle. Okay, to transfer the energy, to transfer the sound energy. So that is a mechanical wave. Okay, and another example is also like a water wave. Okay, and also the seismic wave. Right. So mean it have to, uh, it have to have the air particle. Okay. To, uh, to transfer the energy, okay, from one place to another place. So that one is the mechanical wave. Okay, how about the electromagnetic wave? Okay, so example as the sunlight, okay. So how does the sunlight can enter the earth? Okay, so even there is no uh, air particle, right? So at the outer space, you know there is no air particle, but we can still receive the sunlight, okay, from the sun. Okay, why? Because this is electromagnetic wave. So it doesn't need any medium to transfer the energy. Okay, so it does not require a medium to transfer the energy. So, and it made up from the oscillating the electric and magnetic fields, okay, perpendicular to one, uh, one another. So actually the electromagnetic wave is made up from the electric fields and also the magnetic fields, okay, that are per per perpendicular to each other. Okay, and it, it is oscillating. Okay, uh, so this one, it does not require a medium. An example is a radio wave, right? Light wave, gamma rays, okay, microwave. Okay, so all that doesn't need medium to transfer the energy. 
okay, to transfer the energy. Okay, so remember for the mechanical wave, it needs a, a medium, okay, to transfer the energy, uh, such as a sound energy. So it need the air particle to vibrate so it can transfer the energy, okay, from one place to another place, all right. And uh, for the electromagnetic wave, okay, it does not require any medium to transfer energy, okay. So example like the uh, sunlight, okay. Okay, so now we see about the uh, longitudinal, okay, and also longitudinal uh, wave, okay. So let's see the video first. Okay, all right, so you can see this is actually a longitudinal longitudinal wave, okay. So you can see it produced the compression pipe, okay. And this one is a refraction, refraction pipe, okay. So it produced the compression pipe and the refraction pipe, okay. So uh, this one, it says here, uh, the blue dots represent a particle in the spring. So what is the direction of the propagation of wave? Okay. And what is the direction of the vibration of spring particle? So anyone can answer this one. So what is the direction of the propagation of the wave? And what is the direction of the vibration of spring particle? From the, from the right to the left. Means from the left to the right, is it? Okay. So from the from the left to the right. Okay. So this one, let's say we see again the animation here. So this one from the left to the right. Okay. So mean if I uh, the direction of the propagation of wave is from the left to the right. Okay. But the direction of the vibration, okay, it move back and forth like that. Okay, it move back and forth like that. Okay, so this is the example, another example. Okay. Alright, so let's see the answer. Okay, so the wave propagates to the right, okay, means uh, correct from the left to the right and the spring particles vibrate back and forth, okay. So actually what is the relationship, okay, what can you say about the direction of the propagation of wave and direction of the vibration of the spring particle. So what is the connection here, what is the relationship here? Yes, very good. Okay, it's parallel to each other. Okay, so this one uh, actually is parallel to each other. Okay. So this is the animation that we saw just now. Okay. So you can see it just back and forth like that. Okay, the vibration of the particle. So when it transfer the energy, right, and then it go back. Okay, it transfer the energy, it go back. Okay, so this one is the direction of the vibration of the particle. Okay, so you see the blue dot there. Okay, wait, I repeat again. Okay, it's just back and forth like that. Okay, so this is the direction of the vibration of particle. It just back and forth like that. But direction of the propagation of wave, we can see the compression part, right? Is moving from the uh, from the left to the right so it's parallel to each other okay so this is called as a uh, longitudinal wave okay so a wave in which the direction of vibration of particle in the medium is parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave is called as a longitudinal wave okay so this one you have to remember the meaning Okay, so this one, they underline the word parallel here. So, I mean, this one is the key word. So, you have to say the direction of the vibration of the particle is parallel to the direction of propagation of wave. So, that's the meaning of the longitudinal wave. Okay. So, anyone know what's the example of the longitudinal wave? Okay. 
example of wave. For example of wave that using the long for example of longitudinal longitudinal wave sound yes very good okay sound using long sound is a example of the longitudinal wave okay so it means it's, it's parallel to each other okay and then it just uh vibrate okay back and forth like that okay and the direction of the propagation also is a parallel to the uh, direction of the vibration of the particle okay and it produce the compression and the refraction part. Okay. So how about this one? Okay. The direction of the vibration you can see here it move up and down, right? Light uh, light is the is a transverse is an electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave okay light is a transverse wave okay only sound is the longitudinal wave okay because light is actually the example of the electromagnetic wave okay so electromagnetic wave is the transverse wave okay so this is the transverse wave so as you can see it's different from the longitudinal okay and you can see the red dot here okay so you see the red dot here, it move up and down. Okay, so just now it move back and forth like that, right? So this one, it move up and down like that. Okay, so and then the direction of the propagation. Okay, wait, I pause first. Okay, you see the direction of the propagation of the wave. Okay, it's to the right. Okay, it move to the right. Okay, but the direction of the vibration of the particle, it move up and down. So, it's just like a perpendicular, right? 90 degrees, okay? It's just like perform, uh, produce a 90 degrees here. So, this one is actually perpendicular. So, the direction of the prop propagation of wave here, because you already see just now, it moved, right? From here, from left to the right, okay? And you can see the direction of the vibration of particle, it moved up and down. So, mean it produced the perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, it moved up and down but it just stay right here. Okay. Remember, it only transfer the energy, not the wave particle. So, the wave particle only move up and down like that. Okay, here the say the red dot represent a particle in the spring. So what is the direction of the propagation of the wave? So this one already explained. So from where to where? Anyone, what is the direction of the propagation of the wave? left to the right okay direction of the propagation of the wave means which way does the wave move okay so this one from the left to the right right okay but the direction of the vibration you have to see the particle here direction of the vibration of the spring particle you see the red dot here so the red dot move up and down but direction of the propagation of the wave it move from the left to the right okay so for this one the answer is what's the direction of the propagation of the wave so it move from left to right so you can see it move left to right okay okay but for the direction of the vibration of the spring particle so you see the red dot here so the red dot only move up and down okay the direction of the propagation move to the left also it move to the right okay and this one move up move up and down so it produced like perpendicular, okay? So it say here, the wave propagates to the right, okay? And the spring particle vibrate up and down, okay? And what can you say about the direction of the vibration, okay? In relation to the direction of propagation of wave. So what can you say about this one? What is the connection between the direction of vibration of the particle and the direction of propagation of wave? Yes, it's a perpendicular, okay? So, they are perpendicular to each other. 
So you, uh, so later we see, okay, the video to differentiate the longitudinal wave and the uh, uh, transverse wave, okay, uh, using the slinky spring. Okay. So you can see it move up and down and the direction it move to the right, right? And the wave particle move up and down, okay? Still in the same place, okay? Only the wave move, okay, to the right. Okay, so that's why it produces 90 degrees, okay, perpendicular to each other. Okay, so what does the meaning by transverse wave? So a wave in which direction of vibration of particle, the medium is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave. So means the direction of propagation of wave is perpendicular to the direction uh, of vibration of the wave particle. Okay, so must be perpendicular. So this one we call it as a transverse wave. Okay, transverse wave. Okay, so let's see the video, okay, using the slinky spring. Okay. So this is the transverse wave. So that this is longer to the wave. So you can see it produces the compression and rarefaction part. Transverse way. That is using the slinky spring. Okay. So let's see here. Okay. So this is one uh, activity, right? To show, to observe or limit the wave and the transverse wave by using a slinky spring. Okay. So this one you have to type. Okay. Uh, at the end of the one spring, okay, you have to uh, type it. Okay. Uh, type it to the table. Okay. And uh, after that, okay, you have to sit here, hold one end of the slinky spring. And give a sharp push, okay, at what at the other end of the spring, backward and forward. Okay, so observe the movement of the spring. Okay, and it says here label the part, okay, of compression and refraction of the spring and the wavelength of the wave produced. Okay, so for this one, it said another one is ask you to show the direction of the vibration of the color thread and also the direction of the propagation of the wave movement of the spring okay so for this one they already label you okay so this is the direction of the propagation okay so direction of propagation is actually move to the uh, move to the left okay and this one is the direction of the vibration of the thread okay so you can see here it's a parallel okay so can you label for me which one is the compression and which one is the refraction okay in this diagram Okay, so can you please label for me? So compression and refraction. Okay, I already uh, explained to you just now which part is the compression and which part is the refraction. Just label on the diagram here. Only one is enough.
Okay. So let's check whether your answer is correct or not. So this is the compression and this is the refraction. Okay. So this part. Okay. This part is a reflection, this is part of compression. So how about the wavelength? Okay, so the wavelength should be from compression to compression, means from here to here. Okay, this is one lambda wavelength. Okay, and all from the reflection to the reflection from here to here. So this is also called as one lambda. Lambda is actually wavelength. Okay. So from the compression to compression or from the refraction to the refraction, so we call it as a one lambda. Okay. Okay, so for this part, can you please answer for me first before we discuss? Then Okay, for C. Okay, uh, can I call Rachel? What is the answer for C? The wave produced by the slinky spring is a Longitudinal wave. Okay, correct. Very good. Okay, so I will call, I would like to call Chu Hong Zhen. Chu Hong Zhen. So, what is the answer for D? It says here the direction of the spring wave is parallel or perpendicular to the direction of the wave movement. Thousand parallel, okay, very good. Okay, so it's a parallel to the direction. Okay, for E, I would like to call Yap Jun Hin. Yap Jun Hin, E, what's the answer for E? The wave that travel along the spring consists of a series of what? Compression and reflection. Compression and reflection. Okay, very good. Okay, for F, all right. So F, I would like to call Yang Yang. What is the what? The what is the distance between two successive refraction or two successive compression? What's the answer for F? Distance between the successive refraction or two successive compression. Okay, the example like from 
here to here compression to compression or from refraction to refraction this is called as what yang yang uh, transverse way is it that is the type of way so just now remember i told you what yeah wavelength okay so from compression to compression or from the refraction to the refraction is actually the successive of the refraction so the two successive refract refraction means from here to here okay from here to here we call it as a two successive refraction okay or from here to here two successive compression okay so this one we call it as wavelength okay remember the diagram the the one that uh, yeah this one i told you the lambda is actually the wavelength here right is it okay yang yang can you understand okay this is the answer Okay, this one is actually for the um, long, uh, sorry, this is a transverse wave, right? Okay, so try to answer A, B, 2 A, B and this one also. A and B. So you have to label the wavelength, okay? So using this diagram, okay? So using the, this, this diagram, okay, please label the wavelength. And you have to show the direction of the vibration of the color thread and the direction of the propagation of the wave movement. So for this one, for B, you label here because this one they need you to label uh, for the thread, right? So this one you label here, for A you label here. Okay, done. Okay, so I would like to call Ku Jiayu. Okay. For, okay, A and B, I will answer for that one. Okay. For this one, I will answer because this one you need to draw, right? Okay, and only for A and B you answer. So, Jayu, can you give me the answer for A, for this part? The wave produced by the slinky spray is a... Traverse wave, okay? It move up and down, okay? And the direction of the propagation to the left. Okay, Virish. Okay, so what is the answer for B? It says here the direction of spring wave is perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular to the direction of the wave movement. Okay, so let's see how to label the wavelength, okay, uh, for the transverse wave. So we already see how does the wavelength, okay, how, uh, how to get the wavelength from the longitudinal wave. So from compression to compression or from refraction to the refraction, okay. But for the uh, transverse wave, okay, so it comes from the crest to crest or from throw to throw, okay. So let's say from here to here, 
this is called as a one wavelength okay lambda okay or from throw to throw from here to here okay so this is called as also one lambda okay teacher take oh sorry sorry i'm sorry here yeah, should be this one okay sorry thank you yang yang okay so from here to here from crest to crest or from throw to throw or they say they give you a graph okay so maybe it much clearer if we draw like graph like this okay okay so you can take from here to here okay this is called as one lambda okay or from the throw here to the to here this is called also one lambda or you can take two semicircle okay so two semicircle means from here to here so this is also called as one lambda okay so for this one remember from crest to crest is considered as one lambda one wavelength or from the throw to throw here one wavelength or you can take two semicircle here okay means from here to here right the one that i made is circle so this one is also one lambda one wavelength so every time i say lambda you already know that is a wavelength okay so this one is also is considered as one wavelength right so this is how to label the wavelength okay, of the wave. Okay, so the next part it says here, you have to show the direction of the vibration of the color trip and the direction of the propagation of the wave, okay, movement of the spring. Okay, so from the, for the trip here, so this one they use a ribbon actually. So you can put it up and down like that. Okay, so it move up and down. Okay, but for the direction of the propagation of the wave, okay, means the movement of the spring, the spring will move to the right. Okay, so you can see here it's a perpendicular. Okay, so this is the transverse wave, right? So far you understand what is the transverse and the longitudinal wave? Good. So the conclusion here, right? So a longitudinal wave is a wave which the vibration of the medium is parallel, okay, to the direction of the propagation of wave. So what is the example? So the one that you give me the example just now is the sound wave, okay? The sound wave. Okay, for the transverse wave, it's a wave in which the vibration of particle in the medium is perpendicular cooler okay to the direction of the propagation of wave so example okay so you have a water wave okay and also a electromagnetic wave also is considered as the transverse wave because the direction uh, the electric fields and the magnetic field is perpendicular to each other right okay so it's oscillating in the perpendicular so that's why we call it also as a transverse wave okay so this is the difference between the transverse and also longitudinal okay this is the diagram for the longitudinal and also for the uh, transverse wave right so the next part is okay how to explain about the wave runs okay and then the amplitude, the wavelength, the period, the frequency, and the speed of wave. So how you want to calculate? So for this part, actually, they're most about the calculation part, right? So the characteristic of wave. Okay, so a profile of water wave uh, in a pond. So what changes can be observed, okay, as the, as the wave propagate across the uh, water surface? So what can you see here? What happened to the uh what happened to the water wave here? Decrease, become higher. Okay. Any other answer? So let's see the 
video here. So it's surfing. Okay. There's very large wave there. Okay, so this is a very large wave. Okay, so just now you can see the the wave, right, become higher. Okay, just now the diagram we see, so we can see the wave become higher. We can see or the ripple, right, the ripple become higher. So imagine uh, that the screen is the surface of still water. Okay, so what do you think may happen if you dip a finger into the still water? So, of course, okay, this one also same as you throw, if you throw the stone to the water, you can produce the circular wave, okay, that move upward, right, from the center of the wave, okay. So, it says here, uh, you can see there's a circular wave, right. So, the dark and the bright lines are called the wave front, okay. So, this is the wave front actually. Uh, the one you see, the circle one, yeah, this one is actually the wave front, okay. So the dark and the bright lines are called wave front. So a wave front is the lines, okay, joining all the points of the same face. So this is the line. They join the, all the line, the, the point here. So actually this line is consists of points. So they connected the point here, okay, and it become a circle, okay. So it actually uh, made from a few points here, okay, and then they connected it and then we produce the wave front, okay? So this one is actually at the same face, okay? So let's say at crest, so both of it is all is at crest, okay? If the throw, all of it is a throw, okay? A same face. So a point source emits circular wave front and a long straight source will emit a plane wave front. So let's say if you put a deep, Okay, it's just like a point, right? If you dip your finger, it's just like you put a one point to the water there. Okay, so it will produce the circular. But let's say if the plain source, okay, the plain source or the long source you use, let's say you use a metal, okay, a long straight metal, okay, and then we produce the plain wave front. So like this, okay. So it depends on the source. Okay, so the next part, okay, so we have to know to study the amplitude, okay, the period, the frequency of wave and also the wavelength. So what does it mean by the complete vibration or oscillation? Okay, so the movement from one extreme position to the other and back to the same position. Okay, the movement from one extreme position to, uh, to the other, okay, and come back to the same position. So they say from here, start from P, so then it go to back uh, to R, then go back to P. So this one we call it as a one complete oscillation. Okay, you start from P and then it's oscillate to R, then come back again to P. So this one we call it as the one oscillation, one complete oscillation. Okay, for A it says here, alright, displace the pendulum bob and slotted weight. Okay, so mark the position when the bob and the sl and the slotted weight at rest with letter X. Okay, so can you mark for me which part is actually uh, the pendulum bob is in the uh, wrist, stat uh, wrist uh, state? P, Q or R? P at the re uh, rest state means it has the equilibrium position. 
Q. Okay. How about the next diagram? Okay, so for this one, some of you said P, some of you said Q. Okay, for this one, what is the what is the uh, equilibrium position? Or uh, means the uh, the pendulum bulb or this one is actually a slotted weight is in at rest state. Both also Q. Okay, so actually equilibrium position means okay when you do, don't give any force to it. So for this one is actually you lift up right. You lift up the pendulum bulb. So, me is not at the rest state. Okay. So, the rest state is actually at Q. Okay. So, me is just rest state. It didn't uh, give any force to it. Okay. You didn't lift it. Okay. So, this one is at Q. is the equilibrium position. Okay. So, here is actually at O. Okay. So, this one is O, not Q. Okay. This one is O. So, at O. So, let's say you try to pull the uh, slotted weight, it go back to A, then goes to A, then come back, come back to B, like that. Okay, so O is the equilibrium position. Okay, where you didn't give any force to it. Okay, so it will be just stay like that. Right. So here the answer should be uh, Q, and the next diagram is O. Okay. So now for B, you have to give me right the correct paths for the one complete oscillation. Okay, so for let's say start from P. Okay, uh, so give me one complete oscillation for pendulum and for spin. So this one also I already give you the answer just now. Okay, so what is the uh, the right the correct path for the one complete oscillation for pendulum P, Q, R, Q, P. Okay, so P, Q, R, Q, P. One complete oscillation. So this one, if you do the experiment for the oscillation of the uh, pendulum bulb, right? The first experiment, okay? Uh, this one, you have you already know how to calculate one complete oscillation. So correct? So P, Q, R, P, Q, uh, Q, P. Okay. And for the spring, A, O, B, O, A. A, O, B, O, A. Hmm. I thought it start from B, right? Is it start from A? You should drag it first. Right, drag it. Okay, and then you it goes to O and goes to A, then go back to O, then come back to B. Right. Okay, this one is correct. O B O B O B O A O. Okay, so correct. So O B yes. This one I say you have to pull it. Okay, you have to pull the pendulum bob. Okay. Sorry, pendulum. This one is a spring. Okay, slotted weight. Okay. So, you have to pull the slotted weight first. Okay, then release. Okay. O to B and then go back to O, go back to A, go back to O. Okay. So, this one you have to pull down, not to compress it. If you compress it, uh, it will not affect the same. This one, if you put in the other way, uh, so this one is different. Okay. So, you have to Pull it from O to B and then release it. Okay. Go back to O. Go back to A. Then come back to O. Okay. So the answer is O, B, O, A, O. Okay. So this one that I said just now. Okay. Face. Okay. Point in the same face. So this is the, the wavefront must be the connected, okay? The, the lines must be connected in the same phase, right? So, means just now I said from press, 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 okay? All that connected in one line. So, that one we call it as a wavefront. Okay, must be in the same phase. So, this is what does it mean by same phase, okay? So, this one if X, okay, is press. So, this one also must be press, 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 okay? This is called as the same phase, okay? This one throw, so Z1, Z2, Z3 is mean the same face here. Okay, and for this one, uh, Y1, Y2, Y3, so they have the same face. 
Okay, so this is what by the mean by the same face here. Okay, on for the longitudinal, uh, so mean this one is from compression to the compression. Okay, so mean is it has the same face. Okay, for refraction to the refraction, it has the same face. Okay, uh, so that's the meaning of the face here, same face. Okay. So what does it mean by amplitude? Okay, so the amplitude, if there is a graph like this, so the amplitude is actually the crest here, okay? The high of the crest, okay, from the equilibrium position, okay? So this is called as a uh, amplitude, okay? Amplitude, amplitude. So let's say if I have a graph, okay? And then this is the value, 2 c uh, 2 let's say 2 cm so means this is the amplitude right so the amplitude is 2 cm okay so this is called as the amplitude So the amplitude is OX. OX or OY? So let's say if I have uh, like this, okay. So this is the uh, equilibrium position, okay. So let's say this is, uh, I give you the amplitude here is 14 cm. So from x to y is 14 cm. So can you give me the amplitude? What is the amplitude here? Yes, 7. Very good, Virish. Okay. So this one should be 7 cm and this one also should be 7 cm. Okay, so this is actually the maximum displacement. Okay, so the maximum displacement, okay, from the equilibrium position. So if I draw a graph, okay, if I draw a graph, okay, so like this. Okay, so this one is actually from O, okay. O, so sorry, this one is X, this one is Y, right? Okay, so O, X, okay, uh, this is, and then it go back to O, okay, then this one is actually Y, okay, this one is actually Y. So this one O, X, so O, X, okay, and then go back to the equilibrium position here, O, okay, and then it goes down back to Y. So here also 7 cm. Okay, if I draw a graph, okay, because later you have to draw a graph for me, okay, so 7 cm. Okay, so I explain again, O is the equilibrium position, okay, and then it goes to X, right? So it goes to X, okay, so here is the maximum amplitude that it can go. So this is the maximum displacement or maximum amplitude that it can go, and then after it reach X here, it go back to O back. So now it go back to O back. Okay, and then it goes to Y back, right? So this one is the below Y is the Y. Okay, so it moves in the different position. So that's why it's on the negative part. Okay, so this one, can you understand how do I draw the graph? Okay, is it clear? Right? Okay, good. Okay, so for this part is the meaning of the Amplitude. So amplitude is the maximum displacement. 
So this one, the maximum displacement just now we calculate this is 7 cm. So that is my example. So this is called as the amplitude and this one is also called as the amplitude. Okay, just because the one it moved to up, another one it moved to down. Graph, you see, once it up, one is down, right? Because of the different direction. So that's why it have a up. Uh, the position has the upper graph and also the graph the below part of it. Okay, uh, this one and this one. Okay, because they move in the different direction. Okay, so the maximum displacement of the object from its equilibrium position. So this is the meaning. Okay, and then you have this one also already marked and labeled. Okay, which one is the amplitude? Okay, and for this one is the amplitude is from here to here and the amplitude is from here to here. Must be from the equilibrium position. Okay. Okay, so the time taken to complete one oscillation. Let's say uh, I oscillate from A, okay, and then goes to here and goes to B, then come back here, then go back to A. So how long does it take from the oscillation from A to B, then come back to A? We call it as the period, okay? So example, if I took a, a stopwatch, okay, and try to record the time, so they say the A goes to B, B go back to A. So the time taken is 10 seconds. So means my period, okay, is 10 seconds. Okay, so the period for one complete oscillation is 10 seconds. Okay, so that is called as a period. Right, so for number three, okay, say here uh, the time taken for one complete oscillation. So that's the meaning of the period, okay. And for the frequency is the number of complete, okay, oscillation per second. Okay, the number of complete oscillation per second. Okay, so for this one, I will stop first until here. I will continue on next week. Okay, uh, so uh, if anything, uh, for tomorrow, no, for tomorrow, for Saturday, okay, we have a class on Saturday at 2 p.m. Okay, I will discuss, okay, there's a lot of questions that we still didn't discuss, so I will discuss on that day. Okay, so thank you class, right? So see you on Saturday. Okay, take care. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe. Uh, stay safe. Bye. Bye.